So it's been almost three and a half years since that dock got put in the water. I think it's time for an update. So if you are new here, this pond was dug in the summer of 2019 and that dock went in the water summer of 2020. So here we are three years later, things look quite a bit different from when we started, but the dock, the dock's holding up well. So when we first built this, I only had one 16 foot gangway, but had later had to add a second one because our water level at one point in time this spring was right about where those ropes are. So you can imagine how much more surface area the pond took up. So like I said, this dock was built in the summer of 2020. It is 16 by 16. We have the Trex decking on top of here. And there's a video detailing exactly how we built this, but it's got, I believe, 24 barrels, 55 gallon drums underneath it, and built mostly out of two by 10 with a two by 12 skirt around the outside. These railings came from Menards prefabbed because those were actually cheaper prefab from Menards than buying individual pieces from Home Depot and or Lowe's. Isn't that crazy? We added these flagpoles, if you will. They're actually top rails from a chain link fence, but turned those into holders for a canopy, which there's a video out there as well. But right off the bat, three years in, if I had to do it over, would I do it again this exact same way? By and large, yeah, this thing has been awesome. In our pond, the water level has gone up and down and a floating dock is just the way to go. And with a floating dock, you obviously have to take some measures to keep it in place. So we have two lines tied off and kind of basically pushing this thing back into the, the beach. But the floating dock has been great. I've not had any issues with the barrels collapsing on themselves. We do not take this out of the water in the winter time. Uh, our pond really doesn't freeze over here in Indiana too often. And with that aerator, it really won't. Even one year when we did get about two or three inches of ice, the ice did no damage to the barrels at all. It's been said that using round barrels will actually cause the dock to push up out of the water as the ice freezes around it. That probably is true on a lighter, maybe an aluminum dock, which I've seen before out there, but this thing just weighs so much that it doesn't really happen. Like I said, this is 16 by 16, pretty hefty build. And the Trex decking is definitely the way to go. No splinters for the kids. I will say if I could do it over, I may opt for a lighter color because this gets very hot in the sun. However, that shade we put up here does a nice job of keeping things cool. I believe the dock does have 24 barrels underneath it. Each of these gangways have seven. And if you're looking for barrels, check Facebook, Craigslist, etc. I found a guy who had hundreds of these, so I went to him a couple different times. All lumber on that dock outside of the decking is pressure treated lumber. It has been stained once. Obviously it looks like it could use a second coat. That was about two or three years ago. It seems to be holding up pretty well despite being in the sun all year round. And so I'm not making this video to give you guys the detail about how to build this. I have another video detailing that, which I will link below. But I've had people watch that video and want an update on this thing. So here's said update. What's nice about this, uh, the hinges, I think I've shown you guys the hinges in other videos before. They have a quick release on them so you can separate these gangways from the dock if you need to or the dock from the gangways. On occasion, we do take the dock out in the middle and float it. The hardest part is just trying to get it to where you want it to go. So we often use ropes. We'll tie one off to the beach and area and one to the trees on the far side and kind of pull it. And I actually have a project next spring that the dock is going to help us with. So if you look over there in the fence row beyond the golf cart, you can see some barrels and IBC totes. That is going to get turned into artificial fish habitat and dropped in this pond. And so when we do that, we're going to use this dock as a floating barge. I'm going to take the lines, unhook these two lines here, have one person on the shore on this side, one person on the shore on the other side, and basically position this dock throughout the pond where we want the artificial habitat to go. And those IBC totes are a little bit bigger than our three foot gates here. So we'll just take off one of the rails out here, but this will be a nice floating barge, if you will, to help us move and get that material into the water. Here's a quick shot of those hinges. As you can see, if you just simply pull up on this right here and push off, the dock will be released. Got a few of these spots where the Trex is pulling up coming off of these hidden fasteners. I went with hidden fasteners so we didn't have, you know, holes in here that people were getting their feet snagged on. So a little bit of maintenance to do. I honestly have not touched this though in about two and a half to three years. Don't really do much to it other than making sure it's floating where it needs to float. Long term, I would love to have this cleaned up and maybe have a concrete pier or just a place that we can 
more of this too, a little easier than we do currently. And I know a lot of people will see this and say, okay, a floating dock sounds great, but will it hold up? I promise you, if you build it the way I build it and go back and watch that video, you will have no trouble with this thing lasting. So with the 24 barrels that are underneath this dock, we have over 10,000 pounds of buoyancy. Now that's 10,000 pounds before the whole thing would sink. That dock, as it sits now that the pressure treated lumber is dried out, probably weighs at maximum 3,000 to 3,500 pounds. And I would say that's a very conservative estimate and it's much lighter than that. Said another way, we've had 16 people on this thing before with it floating in the middle of the pond. And not all four corners of the two by 12 were actually touching the water. And when I say the two by 12 not touching the water, I'm talking about this outer edge of the dock. There's a two by 12 skirt and then the rest of the inside is built out of two by tens. And no, our barrels have zero water in them as far as ballast. I know some people, when they build these, they will fill the barrel 20% full to add weight to the dock, to have it sit a little lower and add stability. I didn't go that route simply because of the sheer size and weight of the materials that are in this build. So if you do build it to this spec, not something I think you need to worry about. So if you have a pond and you are looking to add a dock and you don't know whether to do floating or stationary, here's what I think you should take into consideration. One, if your pond is already full and you don't wanna to have to drill posts into the water, then go with a floating dock. Or if your pond level fluctuates up and down quite a bit, go with a floating dock. Once you do decide to do a floating dock, I advise using the 55 gallon drums. Some people will say that they don't like the look of them because you can see the blue or the white underneath. But as you saw, as we were over there earlier, that two by 12 skirt on the outside does a really nice job of hiding them. And as I stand here and look back at the dock, all you can see is about five inches of the blue. And, and honestly, it's kind of shadowed, so you can't really even see it. it. Does not bother me in the slightest, way cheaper than the pond floats. And those things are pretty darn durable. When we first had the pond, we did not have this beach. So that dock was where we went every weekend. And what was nice with little kids is that we just closed up all the gates and had a baby pool in the middle and the kids were kind of in a giant floating playpen. It was really nice. And as they get older, they're gonna start going out there and jumping off and diving in and maybe one day we'll add a slide, who knows. Also, if you do plan to build it to the size that I did, have some friends nearby and perhaps a piece of equipment. If you go back to that video and we built this thing, we used a couple tractors to pick the frame up and get the barrels underneath. Just made life a whole lot easier than having to try to pick it up manually and get that thing in the water. It's been a really nice addition to the pond and I'm told at some point that Adam from Hometown Acres is gonna make me drive to Pennsylvania and build him one. So you guys might see me doing that again here in the near future. That's the kind of friend he is. So hopefully that was helpful and answered some of the questions that you guys had regarding the dock and how it's held up the last several years. It's been really awesome and I think it's gonna be here for quite a while. If you guys are new here, please hit that subscribe button, come back and see me, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.